Hey there, I'm Tam. And I'm Eternally Mortal. And this is the Hidden Egg Podcast. So, yeah. After a brief break, and we should probably still be on a brief break. Because we're coming to you live from COVID town. Well, it's not really live yet. Whatever. <laughs> we are alive. So you may hear some some dinging in the background. Um, that would be my partner Ghost doing some metalworking, blacksmithing, hammer, hammering. Uh huh. And whether you hear it or not, it's just all of us family being a family. <laughs> anyway, so um, we're not gonna go over like comments or anything because I just don't have the energy for it. Yeah. So. We're here to keep going with this thing that we care about. To keep the Hidden Egg podcast going, we needed to kind of just throw something out there. This this episode's going to be a little bit of a, I think, one of those outliers. It's not going to necessarily follow the same format or the same idea as before, but we're going to talk about where we're at, I think. Yeah, um, so... It's been rough. We're both masked up right now. We're in the same room, but we're both sick with the same thing. So, you know, not too worried about that. But we're both masked up just because. Mm -hmm. It's been two weeks, man. I've had this mask on for two weeks. Not this specific mask. I have changed the masks because they get gross every once in a while because I sweat. Do you sweat? underneath the mask oh um yeah but not as much anymore oh my god i sweat under the mask like crazy like i just kind of got used to it and so my face stopped sweating after i was wearing because i wore a mask at every day yeah, at work that's true for the freaking like the three whole, years now the whole well we didn't we haven't had to wear masks at work in months at this point but like it was still like over a year and a half two years that i was wearing a mask every day at work so yeah um it's it's a definite pain in the ass to get used to, but you should, and I'm going to say it. Any, I'm going to say it even though I'm, who knows what's going to happen. But you should be able to be done with that soon. I hope so. the The things I researched said that it could take anywhere from like up to 30 days, in some cases, to get a negative test result, and that's real crappy. I'm not happy about that at all very frustrating yeah I understand I did do the zoomy outie it's distracting I get it um so besides just the mask how you been I've not been well <laughs> and that's why we're here today I, I apparently well I mean I'd like to get your take on it too you went through the, yeah, as yeah. well. I meant us. Your yeah. case seems to have been moderate, while my case seems to have like been at the tail end of moderate, bordering on severe, from what I can gather. There's some symptoms that I had very briefly that if they had continued for any amount of meaningful time, I probably should have gone to the hospital. Hmm. Like, I had... Um, <clears throat> All the things said confusion, and I was, <laughs> oddly, I was confused about what confusion was supposed to mean, because it's sure. not very, like, I'm, st it's not like that was the confusion, but, like, confusion doesn't mean anything. Later on in my research, I found out that there's, um, it was more delirium, mm. not confusion. Confusion is, like, the way of layperson referencing delirium because if you're delirious you start getting confused about things sure they're two very but, different feelings but i guess an outside observer well, can confuse them the thing is delirium is where it's difficult for you to concentrate mm. and that's what happened to me i had this like five hour block of time where thinking was hard and I don't mean like, oh, it was a little difficult to concentrate. I mean, I was, I don't remember what it was that I was trying to remember, but it was something ridiculously stupid, like what day it was or something like that. 
So simple. Sim yeah, it was simple. Sorry, not stupid. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> it was ridiculously simple and I was really upset with myself that I couldn't remember this. I'm like, why can I not remember this? Come on, brain, work. And so when I looked at all the symptoms that were like confusion, I'm like, well, that's not really confusion. I wasn't confused. No. I just couldn't remember. I was having trouble recalling. Mm -hmm. But later on found out that's actually, that, that was a symptom suggesting that maybe I should have gone and, and, and gone to the emergency room probably. Uh, Potentially. I hate to be, hopefully, not an asshole here, but, like, I would probably want one or two more symptoms. Oh, there was action. also, um, I had, like, a whole day where my eyes were watering. That apparently was another severe symptom. Hmm. Uh, suggesting that there was some brain inflammation going on at the time. Interesting. <clears throat> and that was also the same, same period of time where I was having severe headaches, which isn't, it, that, that's actually on like one of the mild symptoms huh yeah so i don't really know like they were gl very clearly linked to me the less my head hurt the easier it was for me to concentrate and recall information and the less my eyes watered so the headache was definitely part of the severe part for me but <clears throat> yeah i i mean it wasn't a huge Thing, and I was like, I don't know. Like at the time, I was very like, sh what should I do? Is this bad enough? And it was very conflicting information that I found for what, like a lot of things were like, nah, you're fine as long as you can still breathe. And I'm like, yeah, breathing is not a problem. <laughs> sure. <laughs> not breathing through my nose was a problem, but like I didn't feel winded. I didn't feel out of breath. I didn't feel that that chest thing that everybody talks about, you know, something weighing on their chest. I didn't have that. Good. But that might be why it's still here 14 days later. Maybe. But you're not really having any symptoms anymore, right? I got a little, a little bit of the drip. My, my nose just keeps running. Sure. I yeah. assume trying to clear itself up. But I had some, some some mucusy nose problems to begin with anyway. Sure, sure, sure. Absolutely. Now mine was pretty mild. Um, excuse me as I cough. <coughs> mine was pretty mild. Uh, it was basically just the fever for a couple of days. Um, and that was the majority of the symptoms I felt at all. But fevers kick my ass. Like, it so rarely happens that when I get chills, it feels like I'm dying because I'm never cold. <laughs> well, the symptomology says that anything, if you have a fever over 100.7 or 100.4, some 100.5, I don't know, somewhere in there, 100.5, that's what it was. Over that, it's automatically moderate or, or above. Yeah, but these designations... I don't want to take away the importance that they have to you because I'm not going to yuck your yum. You, the experience that you it's definitely have, not a yum, but the experience that you have slash had matters. But my perspective is very different. Like there's nothing. I know I didn't silence my phone, but we got fucking hammer ha happening outside. This is scuffed. It's gonna be fine. <laughs> it's gonna be fine. Don't worry about it. Um. But uh. You know, if you had come to me and said, like, you know, you, this this increases your the level of the disease that you had, I don't care at all. All I care about is what the experience that I had was, you know, like what I went through. And, you know, the fact that I didn't protect myself when you got COVID enough to keep myself from getting it. I feel like an idiot. Honestly, I feel like that happened because we were doing a podcast literally the same night that my symptoms started. Just hours before I got a, a fever. So I don't know that that's something you could have done. There's no way either one of us could have known until I had symptoms. Sure. Yeah, I know. So I don't think there was anything that you did that made made you sick. Maybe. Well, well who knows. But, um, but that was the majority of uh, my symptoms with it. Of course, you know, I locked myself in my room for five days basically, you know, to do the whole quarantine thing, quarantine thing to make sure I didn't infect any more of the household. Um, and so I, I, 
honestly, like, I had more of an uh, an emotional experience with regard to COVID than I did a physical one, if I'm being completely honest. I had a very um, spiritual experience. Um, I feel like I'm going through another dark night of the fucking soul because... Right before COVID, I think I talked to you about this before it hit or maybe right after it hit. I was trying really hard not to just drop everything because I was feeling really overwhelmed. And I was like, I can see in the near future, like the only recourse I have from this feeling is that I'm going to have to drop all these spinning plates. And I would like to not do that. So I was trying to find a way to reduce my the pressure that I felt on, on me. And I, I was unsuccessful. I, my, I'm pretty sure my therapist was very uh, disenchanted by me that particular session. And then I got sick with COVID and I had to. I, I physically could not continue. There was no way I was going to be able to pump out a cafe story. I maybe could have pushed to do an update story, but by that time the, I was having that delirium thing. And I was like, mm, maybe not. Mm-hmm. And eventually I just got to the point where I didn't even want to, I didn't even want to be near my desk because I was like, what if I infect it and then reinfect myself later? And, and so I just kind of avoided my work computer and I sat and I had to like confront the things that had been motivating me. And I have, I, I actually haven't said anything to you about the things that have motivated me. So this is, is going to be an interesting thing because this is the first time you're going to be hearing this, I think. Mm. But the first thing that I realized, deep in delirium, where I'm like, the whole day I was having dizzy spells, I realized that a big part of my motivator for trying to gain an income through, <coughs> through writing, through, you know, whatever, has been because I want to pay you back for giving me the opportunity to not have to worry about it. And so like, I have this like guilt motivating me forward because I mean, at this point I feel like I'm just taking advantage of you. Interesting. For us to put this on the podcast. (laughs) Um, Well, it's, the, it's not the only motivator. I understand. Put it out there, but... Well, just because no one else has uh, been privy to this conversation that we've had a few times, by the way. <laughs> um, like, you, you really don't... You really don't... From my perspective, you don't know anything. I'm not owe me anything. I know yeah, that, it's not about your perspective, I know, though. I know that we're talking about your perspective, and you, you, this is a feeling within you and everything like that. I just want you to know that, like... Whatever you create, I want... I, it's beauty. It doesn't matter. Go ahead. Continue. <laughs> well, then I found out like a day or two later, because after I found that out, I just like kind of wrote it down and was like, I will deal with that later because COVID, man, my head was not in it. Mm. Um, and then like the next day or day after I came back to it and looked at it and then like another flash of revelation of, of, I feel really inferior to Ghost. That's not his fault. But he is so brilliant and can do so many things. He's just so overall impressive that, like, I feel like I don't measure up. So Mm -hmm. I have, like, on one side, I have, like, this guilt that I want to repay you for all the kindness and wonderful opportunities that you've given me. And then on the other hand, I have this feeling of inferiority, like that I need to prove that I can do something, that I have value. Uh And so those are kind of the two things that now looking back that were really motivating me behind the scenes in ways I didn't realize. I wasn't like conscious of it. It wasn't like I was thinking to myself, oh... I need to be, you know, a more valuable person. And so I'm going to do these things to make that happen. It was just like I had a desire to do things. And underneath that, behind the scenes where I couldn't even see, my guilt and inferiority were like 
just making tiny changes and little decisions here and there that sort of corrupted everything, I think. And that led to me being overwhelmed. And so, like, even without COVID, I look back and I'm like, COVID made it last less time. But even without COVID, I, I would have had to have dropped all these plates at some point. I had to. The, the, the motivators were not good motivators. Interesting. And I don't know that I could have shifted my motivator while still holding everything up, while keeping all those spinning plates going. Can you define from your perspective now what a good motivator looks like? Like an example of one. It doesn't have to be a def definition. You know, the funny thing is a lot of um, my mental health through COVID has been surrounding the idea of finding a better motivator. And I don't know. I, I, I don't really know. Right now I'm trying to, trying to just use the motivator of this feels good and this doesn't feel good. Like that's, that's all I have right now. Hmm. It's a relatively <clears throat> simplistic place to start from, but it is a place that one can always start from. You know what I mean? Right. You always have that, how you feel about stuff. Now certainly there's impulses and impulse control and some things that feel good aren't necessarily the best ideas and there's ways to get through that but you have to start with what feels good and what feels bad right but like this doing this episode it, it's it's an extension of that it's um i do things not necessarily that won't potentially get me some kind of money because I, I have sat down and, and spent a lot of time trying to um flesh out an outline for a big erotica series mm -hmm. but that has a dual purpose because you know full disclosure this is kind of adulty but like doing writing erotica helps with my sex life mm -hmm. so and i know that people will read it it's it's got a much better chance of getting some kind of earning than anything else so it's kind of like a Okay, I don't want to be motivated by the money because I don't, I, that seems to have this guilt and inferiority attached to it. But at the same time, it would be nice to kind of rebuild my confidence and my ability to earn money. Sure. And it, for the, the experiences <clears throat> you had, you had the most traction in the um, erotica department. Yeah. So it makes sense. Um, I, I just hope that you have the passion behind the story. That's yeah, I I, always hope. I'm not writing the story until I have the flash of inspiration of like I want to write this. Fantastic, I love it. Um, and I'm not even doing the outline. Like the past two days, I haven't done anything with it. I actually had a uh, I had a, a flash of inspiration for Void Wizard. Hmm. Like beyond just the next chapter, like a plot point that I've been kind of trying to figure out for a while so at some point i, I hope maybe yeah, we can we talk to, about yeah, that we'll need to talk about that soon <laughs> i forgot about that um yeah. but no like underneath all of it i i th this this whole covid thing has has really like it's brought into clear perspective how what's been driving me regardless of my intentions and actions it's it hasn't been doing me any favors and it needs to change the covid hasn't been doing you any favors is that what you said no the motivator oh what's the been motiv driving me oh yes absolutely and so yeah i think that's the best thing to focus on at first you know that motivator what is what is it that's motivating you to do this stuff and then hopefully you'll be able to advance from there well and the, the really the really vulnerable part that I hate. I don't want to confront it. Mm -hmm. My brain keeps like trying to get me to avoid it and I keep forgetting about it as I'm having this conversation trying to build up to it. Mm -hmm. Is that I have to confront, accept, and grieve. Well, grieve and then accept. The fact that I have a life and not everybody goes through this so if anybody listening doesn't understand like it's totally fine. This isn't Part of everybody's life necessarily but I 
I have a life where the universe refuses to give me what I think I should get. So when, when I do a thing, it doesn't matter how likely it is that that thing will get me a particular result. It, it's not only not promised to me, like it's not promised to anybody, but it is, it is more likely that I will get something different. And I pushed against that. You've watched me for like almost two decades now push against that pretty hard. And, yeah. and, uh, and the, this, this COVID battle is like really put that right in front of me. Like, Hey, are you going to fucking see it this time? Are you, are you going to accept it? Or are you going to go back into denial again and, you know, do another five, 10 years of, of blissful ignorance, willful ignorance, and just end up right back here again. Well, let's, since we're being vulnerable about this, what is, what is the thing that you could ignore for another five years? <clears throat> that I am not allowed to depend on if I do this, then that will happen. Right. Which means, which means you have the opportunity now potentially change your perspective to doing a thing for the thing sure sure yeah the result. i yeah. mean that's just potentially a further yeah but ahead you're jumping step. ahead yeah okay, sorry. <laughs> my bad. you know we that's do, usually my job we do that sometimes i know but it's usually me that does that i've been doing it a bit more often mm, recently. that's fair it is it is a human thing mm. <laughs> you are humanifying we're also kind of you know switching places in certain regards a little bit <laughs> our, <laughs> our communication but you know it is what it is. I know I'm I'm still I'm still struggling to actually properly grieve and make no mistake about it it is grief because when like when you start thinking about well what do I want to do with my life with my time what do I how do I solve my problems it inevitably and invariably comes to the idea of cause and effect that you can depend on an effect if you put the energy into a cause like that's just a standard part of human existence our whole society is based around that concept the whole fucking thing crumbles when you realize for whatever reason that you don't have that promised to you that you don't get to control any sort of result even though Society tells you you're supposed to and sure. almost demands it of us. Sure. And a lot, like I said, a lot of people never really have to confront this. Their lives, they have different struggles, different lessons that their soul needs to learn or whatever. And they never have to confront this. And that's fine. I'm not trying to say that this is a ubiquitous experience. Sure. But this is my experience. This is what I have been going through for the last two weeks. Mm -hmm. Is confronting the absolute lack of any guarantee that I have from any of my actions. And grieving, having to grieve the, the potential futures that I was promised by the world. By the logic of... of everything that told me that this should even be possible hmm. and now that i know that it's not like it's it's really hard it's really weighing it is it's very difficult to realize that all you really have is this moment and even then like you don't really have it you just get to experience it right well you get to make some decisions within that moment sometimes Sometimes. <laughs> if, you think, if you think about it. Right. If, if it happens to occur to you. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of a, a big, ex exciting, not the word I really need to say. <laughs> existential? Um, existential journey for through COVID for the last couple of weeks for you. Yeah, I want to cry now. Well, you just released a lot. I you know, know, and it's still in there. It's still very built up. I don't know what to do with it. You just expressed it to potentially an infinite number of people, so there's not a whole lot you can. It's now time. Time has to happen. <laughs> <coughs> Do you want 
Do you want me to talk about what I've been going through? Sure. Have you had some big, deep thing? It'd be nice to come up for air if you didn't, but, you know. What, nice to come up for air? What? Yeah, understand. that's what the, uh, that's what Dr. K says. Like, when you, you get really deep into something, then you have, like, this is coming up for air. Me okay. saying it'd be nice to come up for air was coming up for air because it, it takes the depth and, like, you come back. Right. From from that deep, heavy place to some place a little, a little more superficial, yeah. a bit lighter, so you can breathe a little bit again. Absolutely. Give our audience time to breathe. I'm really bad at coming up for air, but I'm I know. trying to be better about That's it. That's kind of why I was distracting you to see if maybe you wanted me to go on my tangent, so that that way we'd have that breath of air. Yeah, that's why so, I said that. So, um... Like I said, mine was mostly emotional, my little journey through COVID. Um, I've been the sort of person that kind of believed myself to be okay with solitude in a lot of regards through my life. Um, I had a lot of neglect early on, and so, and I had a lot of time in my early 20s where I did stuff by myself. I would go to movies by myself and eat dinners by myself and go out to eat by myself and all that kind of stuff. So I figured solitude would suit me most of the time. Despite the fact that some of my worst times were months alone. <laughs> <laughs> Silly brains. You think you'd learn. I know, right? <laughs> so, um, I mean, during the time that I was quarantined, you still came and brought me food and shit. So, like, I wasn't even that, t that hyper alone anyway. And then the internet also existed, and I had access to it. And so, like, I still had access to Twitch and to Discords and everything like that. So, like, I feel whiny, the fact that, that I had any problems at all, if I'm being <laughs> honest. I come from an enormous, or place of enormous privilege to begin with. I feel like that all the time. Like, I don't even, like, because you work for the whole household, I don't even have to work. So I feel really whiny when I have any any sort of like me whining about not being able to do things for a result is like oh cry me a fucking river you're already in this ridiculously privileged place in in, in life and circumstances i get you yeah it just feels whiny it just feels whiny but i um it's I, not though so because i was in quarantine because i was supposed to be working from my perspective you know because if i never got COVID, i would have stayed working and so i was sick and i have this mentality that um if i am sick it's definitively my fault and uh that i should have to suffer that a little bit that's funny I, that touches back on my thing because like you assume that because you're sick a result that it must have been something that you caused Kind but of. that kind of goes with the same thing in that, you know, you didn't have to do anything for that to happen. Sure. Like, are you going to blame me for getting sick because I went to the grocery store? Like, no, 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 of course not. I'm not trying to say, I'm no. not trying to present a, a living... No, I know. I was just pointing out that, like, you blaming yourself is, it's not different. It's the same thing. We, it can be seen as the same thing. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. There's ways to connect those in yeah. that way. I agree. Um, but I'm still going to continue to tell the story. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Cool. I just, um, just wanted to poke that there so mm -hmm. you don't have to blame yourself. I'm going to, but I appreciate it. <laughs> I do appreciate the, 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 the idea. So anyway, I was, um, I was feeling that way already. That like, you know, it was my fault that I was stuck inside and that I was unable to go to work and that, you know, potentially making other people sick. And so I kind of like pushed a little bit into Twitch and Discord to feel better, I think. I feel like I was doing something decent, and so I was a little bit more interactive in some of the regular places that I go. And um, I'm not going to get very detailed, but I ended up being in a conflict with someone that I was kind of getting closer to over the past few weeks or whatever and uh from my side from my part my perspective um my part of the conflict was that i was in a place that i was already kind of sensitive and then trying to extend myself in ways that i should have been able to see i didn't have the energy or the willpower to do effectively yeah but you've done that 
your whole life to push yourself way beyond your capacity. Yeah. It's just in the last five years or so, you've also been really trying to work on your self-awareness. Awareness, not necessarily of what you do to others, which is usually how people think about self-awareness, but, but what things do to you. You, you didn't have that part of the self-awareness and you've really been trying to work on that so like this seems like one of the first really big moments where it's kind of smacked you in the face like pushing to pushing to the extent that you used to really hurts you like and it can hurt other people because you're not in a place that you can really provide the level of attention and care that you want to right and uh, it's difficult to be able to say this is objectively true because, you know, uh, social interaction, very difficult to really pin down an objective aspect to it. But at least subjectively from both parties, I can definitively say that I did hurt someone else in this circumstance. And uh, <laughs> a common thing I've said in a few of my articles, I, I still haven't really forgiven myself for that. I think that you are forgivable. Yeah, like, sure. The things that you did, whatever damage that you caused, is objectively forgivable. Sure. You may not be ready to forgive yourself from your subjective point of view, but I, I, I feel like it's important to, to, to look at the fact that it's not unforgivable. You didn't do anything that crossed the line... That can never be resolved ever. I understand. You know, and I appreciate the distinction absolutely. And I should, from a mental health perspective, from a self care perspective, from the way I would be uh, um, advising other people, you should absolutely find a way to forgive yourself for that. I should find a way to forgive myself for that. And maybe you will. I probably in time. Will, hopefully, at some point, we'll see. But um, also, there's been, well, anyway, never mind. I don't want to go into further detail on it, but like, yeah, um, it was just an experience that I had. It was something that even as, even as somebody that supposedly has some decent social skills from what other people have told me, I still fuck up and I still hurt people just, just accidentally, just being the bull in the China shop, you know? You know, oddly enough, <coughs> bulls in China shops are actually really delicate did you know that? I didn't. Do you understand why? I know, I but like, phrase? yes, of course I do. But just I just sure. find that it's interesting. That it is interesting. It doesn't actually represent reality for us to use that that phrase. It's. I've never been able to use that phrase since I learned that. Well, anyway, my point is that like, you know, just trying to get my bearings and I'm breaking shit. Like that happened. My point. That's because you're human. Yeah. <laughs> sure. They can't see you rolling your eyes, but I hope they can we hear can it. We can fucking try, you know, as humans, we can try to be yeah, aware of that yeah, kind of shit. You are and trying. I have, you know, been better at being aware of this shit in the past. But not while saying. being aware of its damage to you. Okay, that's valid, probably. So this is a new skill that you're still trying to learn, trying to juggle being able to help somebody be compassionate towards somebody while also helping and being compassionate to yourself sure and allowing your feelings to exist in that space like that's a lot of effort emotional intelligence is incredibly difficult and if it wasn't fox news wouldn't be around sure or it wouldn't be what it is today now who's getting political? <laughs> but yeah, that was the experience that I kind of went through. There's uh, probably more aspects to it or whatever. Actually, there's been some uh, good developments even. Um, I took this opportunity because everything sucks when you have COVID, right? So I took that opportunity to quit smoking. I am now over a week since my last cigarette. Huzzah! Thanks. Um... I still want a cigarette, I still want to smoke cigarettes, and sometimes I'm just pissed at you all that care about me. <laughs> yeah. And why do you give a shit so much? How dare we? I just want to smoke cigarettes, like, you know, there's no reason for this, I can sw I can do what I want, but no, y'all want me to keep living for as long as possible, silly mm. people. So, but a week, 
um, is is a pretty strong achievement through yeah, willpower. Yeah, it is. Because like I've I've had some some decent some decent gains using my willpower uh, in the recent past and in the distant past in various ways. But smoking was always one that was a little bit outside my realm. Like I never made the conscious decision to try again since. The last time years and years ago when yeah, it's like over when, a decade when we quit and then you were like yeah i didn't it, that was the time we tried to quit together and i broke and you were like eh, i might as well break too why not solidarity solidarity and then yeah. you just never try it again not specifically but this time i was like um if everything is gonna suck because of covid then and it's a respiratory disease, so I might get to the point where I can't smoke anyway. That's one of the worst feelings I've ever had is when I had some sort of a respiratory illness and I tried to smoke a cigarette and my lungs just wouldn't do it. Well, I kept coughing it. That, that was last worst. cigarette, you said that you were really feeling, you know, that it was hurting. <coughs> yeah, I don't remember exactly what you said, but it it, it definitely affected you in a, in a way that was like, mm, maybe I shouldn't do this. Well, they kind of, but like I'd already made the decision by the time that happened to keep trying to not smoke, you know, like right. uh, first day I found out I had COVID, I smoked four cigarettes that day. And I'm, I'm usually about 18 a day. And um, then the second day I had COVID, I had one cigarette the entire day. And that was at noon. That was a week ago today. So, um, yeah, uh, that's the positive that I've been able to get through. Um, another community that I really enjoy on Twitch is growing and expanding over the past few days. Like, past few days they've, ex they've grown and expanded a lot, and uh, I'm excited to see it, and excited to see where it's going. And that's been really positive for me, like that community kind of just knows me, just feels a lot more comfortable than a lot of the communities I'm in. Most of those other communities I get scared, because <laughs> I'm, I'm going to do something wrong, or say something wrong, or piss them off. It so. sounds like you've had, um... Currently, you've had a much better time with COVID than I have. I think in the yeah. long term, what I learned, what I had to go through with COVID is going to serve me tremendously. I think if, if, if I can stay in this and not run away from it again, then I can probably change the trajectory of my life somehow. But, man, it sucked. Yeah. I know. I'm happy that you had some, some good come out of it. Thanks. At the very least, you quit smoking, and it's not going to get worse. Like, you've gotten through that first week. The cravings do not get worse from here. Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's just the habit going to be yelling at me every once in a while. Yeah, and, and learning new coping skills. Right. Or leaning on coping skills that you had more often than you were. And I'm sorry you had to get dragged goddamn mud through this you know but like that's kind of your mo yeah yeah so you know but i think you'll be able to get back up and take care of stuff it was really touch and go for a while there i lost all faith in like everything i just didn't care i didn't care about anything it was really like i, I got really low yeah, yeah. and it's 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 a little embarrassing because a lot of people um, on Medium sent me comments about even within the last couple of weeks about how that you know I'm so inspiring because I just never give up and I always no matter what's going on I always have a smile to to give to other people and I'm just like reading those comments and just like I I think I've run out actually <laughs> like <laughs> it's not there right now. Well. <laughs> So I'm going to say this. I'm a little concerned that saying this is going to like enact some sort of like subconscious stubborn demon within you that's going to decide that it must not be true. But I've seen you get dragged through the mud. I've seen you get fucking like completely mauled by the bull. You know what I mean? And you always get back up. Like I've, I've seen so many different fucking like tragedies to your productivity and our art and passion. And you've gotten back up every single time, and usually faster than most people expect. Not that you have to this time. This isn't pressure to do it again. No, no, I know. I know. And, and, and I know that you say that remembering the times when 
I was down and knew that I would get back up again and hated the fact that that was going to happen. Because, yeah. like, why? Nobody else does this. Why? You don't think about how much of a curse it is to never give up unless you have no fucking choice. You know who does this? Anime protagonists. Uh-huh. So what's my what's what's my end boss? Like what what's my journey here? I don't know. This is this is more of a one piece and less of a fucking, you know, Tokyo ghoul. This isn't <laughs> This isn't 25... I haven't seen either one of those. I know. This isn't 25 <laughs> episodes where you can see the big bad bad guy at the beginning of the show. This is one of those ones where the journey never ends. You will continue to defeat big bad boss after big bad boss, and each one will seem like the world-ending worst that's ever been there, but then will look like a, a piece of crap next to whoever the boss is, ten bosses down the road. So you, you legitimately think that I am an anime protagonist? Yeah. I legitimately think that you're Jesus. Interesting. <laughs> so, I mean, you already knew that. I don't know why you said interesting, but... Because now you've told everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, we we just have very, very interesting views of each other, I think. I just really like anime protagonists, because that's the big fucking thing that you can see in, like... I mean, just take My Hero Academia, you know, the main character in that one, uh, I can't remember the fucking kid's name, the little green boy, um, Deku, uh, the whole thing that happens is that that kid gets the shit beat out of him and he still gets back up and fights more, and like, that, that's, that's the same thing with fucking like Hanada from, uh, from Haikyuu, and like, all these anime protagonists, that's the reason why people like anime, is because they watch the little guy get shit on, and still get back up and try again. Yeah, but nobody likes an anime where the little guy never actually moves forward. I feel like I'm the protagonist that's not really advancing. I haven't had a, a, a character development in years. You have <laughs> had many character developments. Medium is one of those character developments, and it's been a very interesting most recent arc that you've been going through. All these people that we did not talk about at the beginning of this episode, <laughs> like we always do, and I'm afraid to list them because I know I'm going to forget somebody and I'm going to feel like an asshole. So y'all know who you are. Sorry about that. Those people, those people watch you in this arc and care about what you're doing, and they're the ones that say that you're inspiring. And it's not, it's not because of the times that you did give up. And you're looking at all your shit like, I don't want to do it anymore. It's not those moments that they're seeing. It's the moments after. No, that's what this is for, though. That's, that's legitimately, that. that's like one, like one of the core reasons why I wanted to do this particular episode. was Because, like, I, I'm not as low as I was. I don't think I could actually do a podcast in those moments no, that's not. just too it's too deep yeah i'm wounded in those moments and i need to lick my wounds and heal but i think it's important that if when i get to a place where i'm less wounded when i can do something like this i want to show people what that looks like because i don't think i've ever actually done that yeah you and ghost are really the only two and sometimes my kid but well this is this is one of those true vulner. I mean, from a bit of a privileged perspective, none of, none of us are, you know, struggling to survive every moment. You know what I mean? We're right. not struggling for food or shelter. I mean, there might be some people, but it's really, it's really rare to be struggling every moment. But the but the point is that like this is the true vulnerability of of creating artistically is that these moments happen to every artist, whether it's visual or written or whatever. These moments. Where everything is fucked. Everything. Everybody sucks. <laughs> everybody and you don't sucks. really know why, but you want to just... Never mind. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll stop singing with Biscuit. Oh, is that what was happening? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. I don't... Singing. I don't listen to Limp Biscuit much anymore, so I don't. I didn't even catch no it. No one has listened to Limp Biscuit much in the past fifteen years. No, I'm well, sure. no. There's like four. There's four dudes that still just love Limp Biscuit. That's it. I mean, we all kind of stopped because of what's his fuck. 
Fred Durst. Yeah, Fred Durst. Probably. I thought it was Fred Durst, but then I was like, is it Fred Durst? I think it's Fred Durst. I think it's Fred Durst. Anyway, the point is that, like, you know, um, getting to this low point is actually, I think, a lot more common than people know. And I'm, I'm, I'm proud of you for wanting to share that this exists it, and that it's okay to I feel think, this way. I think... I think I go through it and I don't mean to I don't mean to like play the victim card or like say I'm better than or worse than anybody but I do feel from what I've witnessed that I go through it so much like more it's it's something that happens to me so often it is such a common part of my life to have this experience I don't like I've got 40 years of it man Sure. I've gotten to the point where it's so much a part of my life, I, it's almost on par with sleeping. Sure. So it's different when you have it happen that much in your life. Because if, if, if it happens at the normal rate, hiding it makes sense. You know, it's only like 10% of the time. It's not my whole life anyway. Why talk about that? There's so many other things that I can talk about. There's so many other things I can be, and I never have to be this in front of people because it's, you know, it's a thing that happened and I just want to move on. But, like, if it happens three times every year for, you know, days or weeks or sometimes months, I've had months of this sometimes. I'm just getting to the point where I just don't know that I can be authentically me and not explain this is a part of me this is a huge part of my journey and what i have been and what i've gone through and this is what it looks like and try not to be surprised if people feel like they relate to that very heavily i like i will be surprised but i'll be really sad because like i wouldn't wish this amount of this feeling on anyone i know a little bit I can see, a little bit can help, but the, the extent to which I have felt it in my life, it's ridiculous. I would never want somebody to have to go through that. So this is a really sudden place for it to be about time to wrap up the podcast, but <laughs> do you want to have any, any final thoughts you want to share? No, I think my final thought is just what I said, really, just now. So I'm going to do a little bit of the whole podcast thing. Um, thank you all so much for listening to us. Uh, I'm sorry that's if it I'm sorry if it put you off a little bit that this one's a little bit different. This one's a little bit more free form, a little bit less targeted in the way that we've been doing. Whatever the hell our idea was for the next episode will probably be our, the next episode that we do. But it is certainly possible that we'll decide to do freeform again. Who knows? We're chaotic bastards. That's just the way we roll. But we really appreciate you being here if you've been here. Um, and uh, well, we had like merch and uh, tip thing, right? Yeah, I got like, we had some merch stuff. I'm 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 trying to work on a new shirt design using the multicolored. Yeah, but you've been overwhelmed, thing. so let's not worry about it too much. <laughs> well, I'm just saying. It's fun, <coughs> so it might it might come out in the next few days. Cool. So, but no guarantee. There's the there's the buy me a coffee thing, and there's the the um, the merch stuff, and you're welcome to engage in that. Please make sure you're taking care of yourselves. We care for you very much, and we're glad you're um, hanging out and sticking around and stuff. Um, I think that wraps up just about everything. I think so. Okay. If we forgot anything, then I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we're not drawfy anyway um well okay i'm eternally mortal and i hope you find smiles this day and uh you know wherever you are whoever you are follow each other follow the dopamine and follow yourself because that's all you got <laughs> <laughs> a little bit different and uh I've been Tam, that's been Mortal. You can find this on Medium and elsewhere. And uh, yeah, have a good one. Bye-bye.